this for just a minute and let me tell you about today's video sponsor. It's very important to me, Omaze. This is, this is a big deal to me. So who is Omaze? What do they do? Well, Omaze specializes in providing one-of-a-kind experiences such as getaways and things like that, vacation type deals, and one-of-a-kind, very unique, giveaways such as the one that they're offering you today in this video a 1968 mercedes-benz 280 sl pagoda it's a rare car and this has been fully masterfully restored now imagine how cool you'd look behind the wheel of this classic convertible guys this is your opportunity to take home a fully restored vintage mercedes masterpiece a 1968 280 sl pagoda you get to cruise in style in this iconic and elegant convertible and it's nicknamed for its iconic concave hardtop roof this vintage mercedes with full restoration is just as stunning today if not maybe even more stunning than it was 50 years ago i'm telling you you're going to turn heads whether you're cruising down a tree line boulevard or your tops down on the coast people are going to be looking at you in this car okay it's silver with an interior of red it's got maximum horsepower of 168 maximum turks of 193 some special features include red leather bucket seats door panels and dash trim it's got a black soft top and of course the pagoda hard top is included ivory color two spoke steering wheel mercedes wheel covers mercedes grill air conditioning heat and european spec headlights now of course the prize is cool but let's be real here to me i think the uh the donation is more important the charity is more important than the possibility of winning a prize winning a prize is very cool very cool definitely motivation for for dropping whatever you can afford to donate absolutely but the charity for this is going to be oak grove school and i believe that's ojai california it is a day school and boarding school and really the money is going towards helping students that need financial aid and that is something i can get behind all day long so i donated 450 dollars of my own money to them i think it is really cool that they offer people the ability to win something really cool something very unique and very valuable at the same time while being able to do these charities and help these different charities out. It's, it's really special, I really appreciate them reaching out and I wanted to make this a very special integration for them. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to help, if you want to donate, go to the link down below, www.omaze.com slash auto auction rebuilds okay or you can just click the link you don't have to actually type it you can just go down there and click the link and it'll take you right there it's very simple guys you go to the page you can scroll down a little bit you pick how much you do how much you want though you want to donate ten dollars you want to donate 150 dollars what is it you want to donate just click the button enter a few details your name and of course you know credit card information payment details things of that nature and submit and you're done super simple and you get to feel good about helping a charity while at the same time knowing that you're entered to win you know this really cool 1968 mercedes maybe you win it maybe you don't but at the end of the day it doesn't matter you did a good deed you helped out you helped somebody out so with that thank you omaze remember www.omaze.com slash auto auction rebuilds now let's get on with the video. Right, so now it's time to get into the meat of the video, which is taking this 1994 Lincoln Town car on a long, long drive, guys. And I want to show you something too. The car, well, I'll get into that once we get down to AR headquarters, but in a sense, she kind of fixed herself. <laughs> you know how that goes. There's a story behind that. I'm going to tell you as soon as we get to AR headquarters. You ready for this? Yeah, it just started with a key. Now I'm telling you, I had the dashboard torn apart. I had the starter solenoid wire taken off. I was, I was just going ham on this thing. And then something kind of bad happened and pretty terrifying, honestly. And then for whatever reason after that, she starts on her own. Look at it one more time, look at this. <laughs> now I wanna show you the mileage real quick, all right? 138,000, uh, 137,875 miles. We're gonna jump on the road and I will meet back with you when we get to AR headquarters or when it breaks down, whichever one comes first. All right, if you're wondering what we're doing, get back dog, get back. Oh, well, whew. let's put that out. We've got a, uh, we got this ant hill over here, man. Uh, I don't know when this thing showed up, but she's a mess. I'm gonna get back a little bit. She's really starting to spread. But that's a nasty anthill, man. It's so bad. 
they got into the uh, the shop over here all through the floor and over there too yeah I can't deal with that so we're just gonna burn them that's what we do burn them and teach them not to come whoa that one just flew on me flying ants yep we're gonna burn them and teach them not to come back all right let's get on to talking about the uh, the stinking Lincoln shall we but first yeah that's how you do it man a little bit of used motor oil a little bit of rotten gasoline and uh, an ignition source that's how you take care of that they are uh, they're dead and their home is unusable they can't return to it so that's the end of that ant hill now we can talk about the stinking Lincoln. So it's been a long time since we've been back to AR headquarters, man. I, I miss this place. The thing is, is when I'm not here, I don't really miss it. But when I come here, I realize how, kind of how, how special this place is. You know, it's the first shop. It's the first real lift, big four post lift. It's a lot of firsts here, guys. And, and this place is special and very important to me. So uh, anyway, we got the 94 Lincoln down here and you notice the hood is closed. There's a couple things I fixed. Uh, one was the hood. It just needed a little bit of cleaning, the latch, and uh, then a little bit of lube. You can always use lube, right? Look at that, pops right open. No issue at all. Let's take a look. Now we just drove here, so this thing is hot. All right, she's, she's real hot. Uh, I could tell you, this car gave me no issues at all, none. It made it down here with no problems at all. Didn't shake, shimmy, the brakes didn't squeal, like nothing. Um, the only issue we have is the airbag light is on, and I believe that is the airbag diagnostic uh, connector there. The check engine light came on once we were on the interstate. We drove 70 miles here. I think that connector right there is the uh, OBD diagnostic connector. Now, I don't know if I have anything old enough for this. I think the old school Ford way of doing OBD1 was using a, uh, what do you call it? An analog digital volt ohm meter that has the needle that sweeps. And that's how you would diagnose the codes. Now, I can tell you this, with the check engine light on, it didn't run any differently. It didn't drive any differently. I'm gonna show you right now that we did put 70 miles on it and some of those miles were 80 miles an hour and some of them were at 70. But uh, 69.7 miles is what we drove. Listen to this. Purrs like a kitten. Oh, the check engine light went off. Oh, the check engine light went off. It's over there right by the airbag light, right above it. So apparently it was just an intermittent thing. We filled it up with fresh fuel. So it's got a full tank of 91 octane non-ethanol gasoline. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her down. And I'm here to tell you, uh, you wanna talk about a road cruiser. This car is a road cruiser, guy. This thing is a road warrior. It handles the highway, the roads, like, I, it is so comfortable, I feel like it's almost dangerous. It's almost dangerous for a car to be this damn comfortable driving down the road. Even, watch this, there you go, shuts. Even on the crappiest roads, the car was still super comfortable. Very soft in the curves, which I'm not used to. I'm used to very tight cornering. This car is very soft cornering. Uh, I fell in love with it. I really did. The only thing it's missing is some modern conveniences like, oh, I don't know, Bluetooth? <laughs> Bluetooth would be nice. A, uh, an aux cord, I think, would be nice. Just about anything would be nice. Um, it has no modern conveniences at all. But just look at it. Absolutely gorgeous, man. Now, I told you I was going to tell you how this car starts starting on its own, right? Because that was the biggest problem we had when we got it, is that we couldn't get it started with the key. Well, let me show you a little something. So under the hood here, right by the battery, you know, see this weird brown cable that looks like it just, just doesn't belong, right? That don't belong there. Well, look, I couldn't figure out what the deal was with the starter, okay? I tried everything, couldn't figure it out. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bypass. What I actually did was hook in line to the existing wiring to the solenoid. I spliced this wire in line. So until I could figure it out further, I didn't have to climb under the car to start it. You just pop the hood. 
Bingo, and when you're done, just shove it in there. That wire is never hot, and since the ignition wasn't working anyway, I mean, it literally was never hot, but even if it had started working, this wire would only be hot when you're cranking the engine, okay? So that was just a temporary fix. Well, here's what happened. I did not get the car fully into reverse. I had it on a jack and I had it on a jack stand, okay? It was, I mean, I had it not fully in park. It was partially in reverse. So I had the ignition on. I was testing my new wire. I connected it to the battery and the car fired right up, man. Came right to life. The problem is it started in reverse. Well, it didn't take me long to figure out that I was in a very dangerous situation. The car came rolling off the jack and the jack stand, drugged the jack and jack stand across the floor and started quickly heading towards the Plymouth Plaza. So I ran across the car, chased it, jumped through the driver's window, grabbed the shifter and threw it into park, okay? And I proceeded to freak out. I shut the car down. I cleaned up the mess that was made and I was like, I am very lucky. If I had been under the car when that had happened, I most likely would have been crushed, probably killed. At least I would have been severely injured. And I came back to the ignition and just for the hell of it, I cranked the key and it started. It, and it's been running ever since. So now we're gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna get under there, we're gonna disconnect this. And the starter solenoid wiring is not very good. I'm gonna try to fix that as well. We're gonna take a look, see if it's leaking anything after this long drive up here. Um, make sure there's no oil or transmission fluid pouring out from under it. And uh, see if it needs anything. Because currently, I don't think it does. I think it just needs a good cleaning and a paint job and she's ready to roll. Well, here's what I like to do. I like to start from back here and we'll just kind of work our way up. So let's dip and come up and let's start taking a look at everything. Here's the rear differential. Now, I do have the Carfax report on this and this thing has had rear differential services as well. Yeah, rear diff services, it's had trans services. This has been very, very well cared for throughout its life. How it ended up at auction, I don't really know. I wanna give you guys a good look out here. There's your airbags, all right? You can kind of see in there, it's a little crusty, right? Yeah, so that's your airbag suspension that most people end up replacing. And uh, drive shaft over here. We'll come back over here and there's the other air suspension, the other air shock right there. Let's see if we can, it's hard to get up in there, man. There we go. Yeah, she's seen better days. She's seen better days. I like to be fully transparent, guys. Like I could hide all kinds of stuff, but uh, you know, there's just no reason to. Obviously looking at the suspension, everything looks pretty good. Bushings look really good as well. Same thing over here, sway bar bushings on the rear look good. You've got uh, your uh, sway bar in link. I almost forgot what it was. Looks very good as well. A uh, little bit of rot here on the rear shock bushings, but honestly not too bad. Obviously, I think these have been replaced. I don't see anything leaking. Bushings up there, same thing, look really, really good. Here's your fuel filter. That could probably stand to be changed, but if you look, you see that writing on the top of it? That's not a factory filter. Nobody ever changes their fuel filter, guys. Nobody, but somebody took the time to change the fuel filter on this. How about that? Got a body mount bushing right here. Looks like it kind of popped out of its hole. Oh, you know why? You can see some paint on there. That's transfer from the uh, yellow loader. One of, their, uh, one of their forks hit it. You can see right there. This right here, there's a little bit of grease all around here um that is not from this car this car doesn't this car is not leaking anything that's transfer from something else uh well that's an ugly weld right there that is a super ugly weld right there that looks awful we got the same type of weld over here too very ugly do they do that from the factory wow you got a little bit of scrapage on the converters again transferred from the forklifts obviously transmission right here very dry looks very very good rear seal is not leaking looks very nice very nice i did check the speedometer with my uh, gps and the speedometer is a hundred percent accurate moving up to the engine no leaks look at that 
no leaks at all. Boy, this camera does so much better than the GoPro. Like, so much better than the GoPro. I can get you way up in the engine. You can see everything under here. Everything. Look at that, including my wiring job on the starter solenoid, which, as I said, this is the wire we're talking about here. I'm gonna have to get under here and, you know, that right there, that is never okay. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna promise you I'm taking care of that. We got some new shocks too. You guys see that? Look at those blue shocks right there. Yeah, got some new shocks up on the front as well. And as I said before, tires are in excellent condition. You got lots of tread on the tires. Looks like they are cracking a little bit, huh? Yeah, they're cracking a little bit. But uh, really good tread on the tires. Everything under here looks good, guys. Everything under here looks good. No leaks, that's what I like to see. No leaks at all, except for whatever this is. But that doesn't look like it's active. That looks like it's from a previous, previous leak. And we have on the front suspension some new components too. The idler arm and the pitman arm have been replaced, as have the tie rods. Okay, I've got that on the Carfax report as well. And over here is the new pitman arm. They got replaced. There she is, still got the writing on it. That's on the Carfax as well as the, uh, the tie rods and everything. Somebody took really good care of this car. You know, that's the point that I'm trying to make is somebody really loved this thing and they took really good care of it. Now, the one thing that has to get working on this for me, if I was gonna start driving it on the daily is the air conditioning. So I guess we're gonna see if we can't throw some AC in it real quick, get the air at least working temporarily for my ride home. All right, so here we are, we've got the uh, air pump and 94, I think was the first year of R134 for North America, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was. This is, regardless, this is a 134 system. So I didn't have to do any weird conversions or anything. We've got the high side, we got the low side. And here, hopefully you can see, we are holding a vacuum. It is taking a vacuum. That's good because a big leak, it would just be sitting there on a, it would just be sitting there on zero. And if you shut it off, another way to tell if you got a big leak, is if it goes straight back to zero, you can see it's still, hold it'll lose a little pressure once you disconnect the vacuum, but as long as it's holding some, that's good. Now we gotta leave this on here for about half an hour or so, and uh, we'll let it do its thing. Then we'll try to hold a vacuum for about half an hour, and as long as that's all good, we can throw some R134A in her, and uh, so long as everything else is working, we might just have some air conditioning. Well, everything went according to plan until it came time for me to grab my R134, at which point I realized somebody that I let use my shop a while back um, used up my, uh, my R134, so I don't have any. Um, I've got one can left, and that's not gonna be enough to do this. So we'll, uh, we'll turn it on. AC. And we'll see if we can get it to do anything with one can, but realistically, uh, there's no way, man. One can's not going to cut it. So that sucks because it's a little bit of a ways to town. Let's go ahead and hit it. Listen for that compressor. All right. Well, unfortunately, one can isn't enough. So we're gonna have to postpone that. Everything that I'm doing, I'm trying to do right now, get it done, because I got other things to do. Let's see if it still wants to start. Well, I've heard better, but it started. It did, it started. All right, turn that e-brake off. Oh, it's not in reverse. You gotta really, See, now it looks like it's in park. That's what I'm saying. This shifter is wonky, man. You saw that it was in park, but it was in reverse. Look. Okay, look down there. You see it's in park, right? Watch me let off the brake. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't, it's, it's wonky. Park is, we gotta really feel it. Reverse. That's neutral. So then you got to go back up. The shifter is a little, uh, it's a little off. It's a little off guys. I'm going to pull this out front. Nick said he's going to do some cleaning on it for us. Oh man, that wind feels good out here. Nick, we shut the garage. Thank you. 
I think it's in drive air. Yeah, the shifter's a little wonky, guys. And a lot of people are asking already, like, what am I gonna do with this? This is going up for sale, folks. 100% this is going up for sale as soon as it's done. But uh, just be aware of that, all right? Don't get it and think that the trans is broken or something, it's not. You just gotta, you really gotta feel for park, reverse, neutral, and drive. I'm gonna pull this up here so Nick can, uh, Nick can do some cleaning on it there. Yeah, yeah, you just really, you really got to feel for it, man. Let me zoom you back in again. Like, here, actually, let me zoom you out right here. Okay, park. That's park, but you go reverse, that's neutral. Okay, it's actually in neutral. You got to one-up it. Now you're in reverse. Park, make sure it's in park, and then drive. That's, no, that's neutral. There's drive. Yeah, it's, it's wonky. It's wonky. I'm gonna set the e-brake just because I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be responsible for some crazy stuff happening. Let's go ahead and roll the window up. Power windows do work. All right, let's shut her down and get her cleaned up. Man, I do miss this place, guys. <laughs> I really do. There really is just something about owning your own place, you know, especially when you own it outright. It's just, it makes it feel so much more like home. Like it's yours, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, let's get off of that. Nick is gonna come out here and work on cleaning this thing up. Look how bad it is. Why are we cleaning it before it goes into paint? Oh, I don't know. Why not make it look as good as you can, right? You know, she's looking pretty rough. I can't tell you last time it's had a bath. Probably been a long time. Who remembers the 1955 GMC 350? Yeah, she's still here, guys. She's still here. She hasn't gone anywhere. What a beautiful old truck. We got to do something with it, guys. You know, I don't. I don't really intend on going far with this one at all. But uh, Michael from Santa's Workshop did bring me a gas tank and some other parts for it. So it only seems right that we try to get her running, you know, get a fuel system put on it. There's the new gas tank that he gave me right there. You know, pull the seat out, get the gas tank replaced. Hopefully I still have the key to it. I have no idea where that is. Uh, but it'd be nice to kind of clean it up a little bit, get her running, and uh, hell, maybe even get her moving. I, I, that may be asking a little much, but... Uh, Maybe you can get the brakes working. Hell, that'd be great. If we could get any kind of brakes, I would be happy. I'd also like to test out the dump bed. We don't know if the if the PTO works. I'd be interested to see if this dump bed works and maybe even take off the side rails. I don't know, maybe we'll do something with it. You know, the more I come out here and look at it, the more I think maybe, maybe we could do something with this truck. But anyway, Nick, you're about to clean this thing up, right? Well, thank you, sir, I appreciate it. Nick's always here helping out, man. Look at him, he's ready. He's got the sponges, he's got the scrubbies and everything. Have at it, man. Hit it with water first. Remember, uh, once that bucket's full, soak it down with the hose and then uh, you can tear into it. All right. Well, real quick, I just went and got my mail and I found these license plates in the mailbox from a guy named Frank. So I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Frank. He says he watches my videos every morning and he heard that I like license plates. So he wanted to send me some. We got a couple from Maryland, Pennsylvania, the Keystone State, and uh, West Virginia right there. So Frank, thank you, man. I appreciate that. For any of you that want to send anything out here, you can send it to AAR Auto Sales. You can send it to Auto Auction Rebuilds. You can send it to Randy, R-A-N-D-Y. The address is 502 East Ripley Street, Byers, Oklahoma, 74831. You're welcome to send me whatever. Just uh, send it to that address. And if you want to be on video, if you want it on video, definitely let me know. And if you don't want me to mention your name or something on video, definitely let me know that as well. Frank, thank you for the license plates, man. Truly appreciate it. Well, Nick just got attacked. He got attacked by ants? Yeah, you know, fighting me. Oh, man. Just finish that car, though. Let's hurry up and get that done. Don't worry about the ants. Okay, we got we got things you got to focus on. The ants biting you are not important. Right now, we got to get this car clean. That's the most important thing, right? 
I'm kidding, man. Definitely focus on the ants. <laughs> yeah, I them out. Yeah, you, you kill them? Uh, yeah. I'm assuming they were right here from this little, this pile of mud, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully now that it's all wet, you drown them out. We got a lot of those biting ants around here, man. Those things suck. Well, guys, we made it. That was a, uh, that was a long drive. Like, that was two hours of driving, and we made it. So, uh, if anybody had any doubts about the old stinking Lincoln, well, now's your opportunity to uh, to apologize. L look at that right there. Tell me that is not, tell me that is not sexy. Uh, that is gorgeous. All right, let's throw it in park. And very important on this car, make sure it's in park. Very important. Let's take a look. We've got no warning lights on other than the damn airbag light. It comes and goes, man. It, it, it's kind of sporadic, but you know, no check engine light. And look at that. We just hit 138,000 miles on this. We have driven 127 miles. 127 miles in a car that's been parked for six years, guys. A car that was parked for six years. We just got in it and drove it over 120 miles in one night. I knew you guys might want to see it cleaned up. Um, I know it doesn't look great because of the, uh, you know, their clear coat peel right there, that's kind of rough. But aside from that, the rest of the car cleaned up nice. I think the wheels came out pretty nice. We still got more to do. Obviously, we got to take it to Mako. We got to get her painted. And then on top of the paint, we got to get the windows retinted. But other than that, I'm not sure there's a whole lot more to do to the old girl. I guess that side's not going to come out very well, but oh, beautiful. And yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Karen or Christy or whatever. You are absolutely beautiful as well, old girl. Yes, you are. Gorgeous car. Gorgeous car. And the Harley, which we hardly ride anymore. We had a cat get in here the other day. Let's see if this comes out on video. This is going to be real hard to, to show you on video. Nope, there it is. Sure, you see those scratches? Those three scratches right there? Or four, I guess? Yep, a cat got in here. My dog caught up to the cat and chased the cat on top of my beautiful car. And the cat scratched the... <laughs> Better watch out. All right, she might end up with cat scratch fever now. There's no telling what's gonna happen. Well, there you go, guys. You know, the damn thing runs and drives absolutely great. I even took it down what I call Hell Road. Um, and that's the road that all cars bottom out on. I mean, not all cars. If you've got a really good suspension, you'll be fine. But cars with questionable suspensions don't survive. I can't tell you how many... Shut those lights off. I can't tell you how many suspension components I have blown going down that road. And it's mainly been shocks and struts. They just blow out. Um, I wanted to take it down that road because... I wanted to verify that the air shocks on this, or they're not really shocks, the airbags on the back of this were tough enough to handle that road. If they can handle this big boat hitting those dips, and I mean, those are heavy, hard dips at 60 miles an hour, they can handle just about anything, guys. She made it, she did great. I'm happy, and I think for, the, the, for this video, I think we're done. I don't really know what else we could, we could do. It's getting kind of late. I'm tired. I just kind of want to go to bed. Now, before we get out of here, I want to remind you about Omaze and the charity. Please don't forget, this is for a good cause, ladies and gentlemen. This is to help support Oak Grove schools out there in California. So please do it for the right reasons. Do it just to help out. I want to make sure all of you know that I truly appreciate you watching the videos and I appreciate you helping to support the charity for sure, guys. Really, thank you all so much. If you enjoyed this content, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed the content. Also, do me a favor, drop a comment down below. Let me know how the video and audio quality is working 
working out for you. I've been putting a lot of time into learning this camera and really trying to figure it out, make sure I got the stability better because the initial footage that we were making videos was is a little rough. I think I've gotten it a lot better. The audio I'm still tweaking, but I definitely want to know what you guys think down below. It's a lot of work switching to a new camera and trying to figure out how to do 10 bit 422 and 4K 60 uh, and the cameras it's heavy it is heavy holding it all day long but i think the video and auto audio quality ultimately will make it absolutely worth getting this all figured out so again thank you for watching subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed follow me on facebook instagram tiktok auto auction rebuilds links to everything down below and until next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one